The first question is, uh, is coming from people uh, opposed to continuity. Mm -hmm. Some uh, genetic studies uh, coming from uh, Princeton uh, University, yes. uh, David Reich, yes. mm -hmm. wrote a book and saying that there is a discontinuity after the, the, the people who build the megalith megalithic civilization. The theory is they got wiped out by a bubonic plague. Um, but David Reich's work is, is vital, it's very, very important, and, and I think the real future lies, uh, in these studies, lies with much, much more genetic um, data. Um, David Reich's um, um, work um, suggested that there was um, this movement from the steppe um, in, into northern Europe, which did indeed relate uh, in some way to plague, which affected the North European population. Um, when we start looking at the genetics of people more in Western Europe and in Britain and Ireland, um, we can begin to recognize um, this step gene coming in, but it is only a component of the, the genetic composition. Uh, we still have the hunter-gatherer component, we still have the farmer, uh, the Neolithic farmer component. So it is perfectly right that there were um, population movements, uh, certainly into Britain um, in the period probably 2,500 to, well, 2,400 um, to 2,000. Um, and that they did affect the population, but they by no means uh, wiped out the population. And uh, this was, I think, um, and I think even now David would go back on, on the original view. And there's been a lot more genetics since then. That was based on very few samples. And um, we, um, and the, the, your question enables me to, to stress the crucial importance of, of ancient DNA. And one of the big, big problems is we don't have any decent samples from Brittany or northwestern France. Um, so we're, we've got hundreds in, 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 in Britain, um, and we want to look at France um, uh, to, to compare, um, but there isn't the comparative data. And one, one of the reasons for that um, is, of course, your soil here um, destroys bone. Whereas in, in Britain, um, in parts of Britain, um, uh, human bone survives, so we can do the genetics. Um, here in, in Britain, the acid soil um, bites away the bone. Um, so that there is very little material to, to do the genetics on. But I think if, if we, uh, it would be possible if, if um, anyone wanted to follow this up uh, for archaeologists to gather enough samples from Brittany, and I would also include Normandy and, uh, in this, um, and, and the Channel Islands, and really be able to look uh, very thoroughly at the relationships uh, across and, and the survival of the... Um, early hunter-gatherer and, and early, early farmer DNA compared with the, the influx of step DNA. But um, the, these are studies which are really in their infancy and they are extremely exciting. Um, and the future will, will, I think, a future will lie in many, many more samples. There's a piece of work I would love to do, um, is the, the whole suggestion of the, the British moving into Brittany uh, in the uh, fifth, um, fifth and sixth century, uh, this, this movement of people driven out of Britain by the Saxons coming across in, in their boats and, and settling um, among the Bretons. Um, and um, uh, we could study that by genetics. If, uh, if we, we've got tons of samples in Britain. The rest of the university uh, did some study on this. They did some, yes. Yeah. But um, it, it was... Genetic of France, yeah. Yes, it, what it needs is, is um, a very large numbers of samples, yeah. um, and it needs detailed comparisons, um, and, and that could be done. Um, it, it would, one would need to compare um, peasant um, or, um, uh, uh, urban civilization with non-urban, we would need to compare that in Britain, urban and non-urban in France, and urban and non-urban, uh, um, and also north to south. And so on. It would be a very subtle piece of work, and one would need a lot of samples for it. So um, there, there, that, that, that's a long answer to your your very fair question.
Okay, the question is, uh, there is uh, an archaeologist in uh, Brittany uh, who wrote that uh, the cult of the Gaulish people never came in Armorica. Mm -hmm. He has some arguments and there is no Pida. No, uh, no, so there's one just up on the hill. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what do you think about this? Why? I, th I think if, if your concept of the Celts is um, that they, the Celts are Iron Age, um, using the Latin culture that that, um, uh, that one finds particularly in the era of the, um, the Maan and southern Germany, that the so-called home, well, the area where the Latin culture developed um, was um, the area where, where people thought the Celtic language developed. And therefore, um, the uh, it would be fair to say that that area, um, the people from that area at that time, 4th century BC, um, had little effect on Britain. Um, but what, what we're arguing is that the, Celt the concept of the Celt is a lot earlier than that, that um, it, it's a lot more deep-rooted. And um, looking at the Latin culture, in um, eastern France or northeastern France, and, and saying you don't get much of that in Brittany, you do get some, but you don't get much of that in Brittany, um, it is um, uh, really missing the point. The point is um, uh, that um, <coughs> the Celtic language was probably spoken in Brittany long before uh, the Latin culture developed. Uh, certainly it was in Spain and um, probably in Ireland as well. I think in um, what we've what we developed in in um, the, the Celtic from the West idea um, is one that um, uh, really developed in in very much in Britain um, in probably around nine around about two thousand um, and. Um, a big project was organised uh, by the, uh, one of the Welsh universities uh, on Celtic from the West, and that was a, a major piece of research which led to um, the publication of five or six volumes. Um, and it's just possible those volumes haven't reached France yet. Um, uh, that that um, there is a great deal that is, um, has been published, now, uh, um, both for and against the view on Celtic from the West, but it's been um, strongly debated, certainly in, in, in Britain. Now, um, some of the linguists um, uh, argue against it, um, some linguists argue for it, um, and it's becoming more um, uh, relevant uh, because of the ancient DNA. And um, what, what, what a very exciting piece of work, which again David Reich did, um, was to look at the population of um, southern Britain and what he could find of northern France um, and show that um, from the Bronze Age, so from 1400 BC until the Roman conquest, uh, to argue, to see whether there was movement of population. And uh, what he was able to show was that the only time there was any population, significant population movement, was in the uh, this Middle Bronze Age period, so 1400 to 1200, when there does seem to have been a movement um, from northern France, um, uh, Normandy basically, across to southeastern Britain. Um, and, uh, but no movements after that, no significant movements after that. The genetics says no. Um, uh, and um, so how do we interpret that? Well, some, uh, some linguists said, ah, that shows that um, Celtic was introduced into Britain from France uh, in the period, um, uh, in, the, in, in the mid to late Bronze Age. Okay? Much earlier than they used to believe, but okay. Um, but uh, the point is that that is the last time 
that, that there was a significant movement of population into Britain that could have brought a language in. And the form of Celtic that was spoken is an advanced form of Celtic, um, which was spoken in um, France as well. Uh, and um, uh, we have in Britain an archaic form of Celtic, which is Irish um, and um, uh, a, Scot uh, a form of Gaelic in, in Scotland. And that's a much earlier form of Celtic. So if the last form of Celtic moved into Britain um, in the, the, the mid to late Bronze Age, uh, Celtic must have been spoken in Britain before that. So, um, so here is genetics helping us uh, to understand the, these movements. But um, I think to go back, back to the original question, um, our, our, um, archaeologists um, <clears throat> tend to be um, to, to specialise in um, sort of fairly small areas. And, and this really requires people to look at um, language uh, and genetics and the archaeological evidence uh, and to look at the very, very big pictures. And the big pictures are only just now beginning to, to circulate. Um, it's, it's early um, and the, the debates are underway now. Um, and uh, give it 20 years and uh, it will be interesting to see, well I hope, um, I'll be around then, it'll be interesting <laughs> to, to, to see um, uh, how the arguments have developed.